gentlemen, a celebration of life. Jesus spoke these words in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Greetings. My name is Chaim. I am the Abalone Kid. Welcome. May God richly bless you, my beloved. Today and every day, let's give glory to the Lord of glory. Jesus Christ is coming. There are two God-given blessings that were seared in my heart and mind as a child growing up in Brooklyn, New York. The first was the love of my parents, and the second, the devotion of my father to God. He was a man of few words. In his prayers and deep reverence, I witnessed his faithfulness and was amazed at his intensity. He prayed in Hebrew, and though I did not know the meaning of the words he spoke, the Spirit indelibly impressed it in my child's being, which touched me very deeply. Thus I labor in the fields as you, never doubting that I am a child of our Father, who gave me great treasures of the Spirit, while others around me, for reasons I do not question, received great material gifts in a nation that today has reached the choking point of spiritual confusion. Why do we labor? To draw back because we walk in the spiritual graveyard of no returns? God forbid. We bow to God's reality that cries out the name of Jesus Christ amidst the roar of the ravenous lion who walks around seeking whom he may devour. We see by other sight. We hear his melodies that caress our deepest being where his spirit rests within. We taste the sweetness of his words and feast on his loving kindness, propelled by his calling, and are filled with the tears of God in which so many verses were written in the blood of Jesus that inspire and quench our thirst and seal our sacrifice for the glory of His only begotten. Our Father and His Son, the givers of this world and the breath of life we breathe, despised by most, abused by multitudes, loved by few, call out to us to forget what is and has been of man and fallen spirits and fully come over into the reality of what will be through faith alone and apply it to the here and now as though it is in His truth and love. It is. We are His Son's pearl of great price, shining stars in the darkness of this present world, caretakers in His magnificent garden where the flowers stand and sigh, giving Him the glory. We are the 24-7 Church, children of tomorrow. We look for a better place He has prepared and occupy this land where fields are ripe for harvest and by His grace, His laborers who sow His seed in love. For without love, we are a harsh sounding noise in the ear of the lost and the found, and we await His harvest. Beloved, we were known by God before the world was made, that Jesus will never abandon us and never leave us, but one day we'll make good His promise to call each of us up to His side whether we are living or whether we are sleeping. And that day we await with great anticipation, and each day now we work with faith that He will 
come for us. I'm going to quote the book of Romans, chapter 8, starting with verse 28. The subject is God's eternal and unfailing purpose through the gospel. And this was written by St. Paul. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Shall God that justifies? Who is he that condemns? Shall Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Beloved, if anyone has any doubts about their eternal security, these Bible verses should quench any fears and any doubts that you might have and put into the grave any preaching that you've heard by anybody else that your salvation is not secure in our Lord Jesus Christ who is coming soon. May God richly bless you by his word.